God bless you. Let's open scriptures. We read the Bible. Alright. Acts 19. Let's start, chapter 19. Let's start with Acts 19. How many of you have notebook? Lift up your heads. Yeah. How many does he have notebook? Lift up your heads. Right. We are still in danger. All right. Let's read Acts 19 from verse 1. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Just ask that question. So they said to him, we have not so much as a head whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John baptism. Then Paul says, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who will come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Let's pray. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I believe this that I want to share with you is very, very important to our Christian culture. If you can read there, you could see that John the Baptist, John the Baptist had a very good impact. So, to extend that he traveled. Many people were baptized. The many of them were baptized. But now, unfortunately, after they were baptized, they didn't hear the message clear. They were not baptized to believe in John. If you read here, you see that the Bible says, verse 4. Verse 4, how so John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance. Saying to the people that they should believe. On him who have come after him. So you could see that John, when he baptized, he told them, that You don't believe in me, you believe in the one who will come. Here yeah, there's something that is very much interesting that is after they were baptized that the Bible says, after they were baptized in the name of Jesus that Paul lay hands on them they received the Holy Spirit today we can find that Holy Spirit has come to us to speak in tongues even to prophesy if, if you can read these 12 people Kabala ba twelve by twelve ba neva liti. Philip verse seven. It says now the men Philip were seven. about twelve in all. Yeri kau fela neva liti twelve kama mo. That when Paul lay hands on them, apa ona ba tar apa ya matso. They began to speak in tongues and they prophesied. Ba tomo bule la kama li me ba profita. Can you just read this verse six in in Amplified Bible? The Holy Spirit came on them. And they began speaking in unknown tongues, languages, and prophesying. 
So you can see that we need to learn the ability of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit ability. Because if not, we will think there are certain people who are set for this. If not, we will also fight certain people. And like like failing to understand what the Holy Spirit can do. The Holy Spirit has not come to make us joyous. It's after we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Something must happen. These are the people that, you know, they were under the teaching of John the Baptist. But still, they could not reach the level of understanding the Holy Spirit. I remember when. John baptized Jesus. He saw Holy Spirit coming like a dove. I'm sure the teaching to them will be like he came to Jesus like a dove. There was no more revelations about the Holy Spirit in the world. He preached repentance. So I want to tell you that this ability that we are lacking as a church from the Holy Spirit. Let me show you another scripture in the if you read from verse chapter 12 verse 7 1 chapter 12, Corinthians chapter, chapter 12 chapter 12 verse 7 I just want to show you another verse there if you can read verse 7 it says let me just read it says what and let's can you just read? Can you read, Mama? But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit. Yes. It's the spiritual illumination and the enabling of the Holy Spirit for the common good. Each one has been given the manifestation uh, by the Holy Spirit for the oh. common good. The Holy Spirit has come to give you manifestation. Because there's a good that must come from you. Remember that you are called to produce the best. And the ability of producing the best must come from the Holy Spirit. Each one among us here, there's a common good. But it must come from after we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Today, there's too much bad and worse. Because Holy Spirit is not existing in us. I want us to read X five thirty two. Arabic Ndi Tiro five thirty two. X five thirty two. Did five verse thirty two. If you read X five thirty two. Mola Udi Tiro Java Apostola five verse thirty two. You will understand that Holy Spirit is not just there for us. Ota kushir moya langa ano ota fella telari na. And we are his witness these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. So now we are hearing that for common good so that the Holy Spirit will manifest in us to bring out that work. So, but that Holy Spirit will never come to us 
If you read this verse, it's telling us. It says, Holy Spirit that God has given to those who obey him. Holy Spirit comes to the people that obeys God. People who obey God will receive Holy Spirit. They must start to obey God in scriptures. Not just obey God from voices. The scriptures is our road map. When we obey God, the Holy Spirit will come. Remember that the Bible shows that the disciples of John were taught by John. But they were not yet reached the level of understanding Holy Spirit. When they answer Paul, they say, We have had everything but not Holy Spirit. But when they were told, they obey, and after they were baptized, they receive. Therefore, our obedience will lead us to be filled by the Holy Spirit. We must never think that the Holy Spirit will just come to us. The Holy Spirit will come to us if we obey God. Therefore, our character will be like of Christ. If we read Acts 19. If we just read that verse 2 again. Chapter 19, verse 2. Because we have read everything there. Just read only verse 2 there. He asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He asked them, Did you receive Holy Spirit? when you believe. And they said no. They say no. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. These people were fair. But but Christians of now, we are not fair to ourselves. These words were really fair. Nowadays, whatever we hear is from the Holy Spirit. If we read Luke 21, from verse 12, Luke 21, from verse 12 to 19, We'll see something there. I found many people try to speak in tongues. But they can't prophesy. When you prophesy, either you speak scriptures. Either you see visions. I mean Prophecy is not issues of I see vision or I see prophecy. In other words, after these people were filled with the Spirit of God, they were able to quote scriptures. They were beginning to speak things that somebody can hear, they are talking about what is going to happen. Let's read verse 12. It says, Luke 21. Luke 21. It says, but before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecuting you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Can you see that verse there? Yeah, whenever I say But it will turn out for you as an occasion for a testimony. It will turn out for you for, as an occasion to speak the word. 14 says, Therefore, uh, settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. Settle it in your so heart. Can, can you read verse 15, Mama? It says, For I will give you words and wisdom which yes. none of 
your opponents will be able to resist yes. or refute. Carry on reading. Yes. But you will be betrayed and handed over even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends and they will put some of you to death yes. and you will be continually hated by everyone because of my name but not a hair of your head will perish by your endurance you will gain your soul stop there there are three things you need to write them down number one why we need Holy Spirit? Persecution is coming. The Bible says you'll be persecuted. So don't meditate on what you are going to say. Holy Spirit will give you what you will say. Uh, people around you family friends brothers and sisters they will betray you without the Holy Spirit you, won't, you will fail to stand without the Holy Spirit you will, fail, you will fail to get revelation the third thing is the people of the world will all hate you you know when I read this I began to say we need to be careful about why, about people who love us. Because this scripture says, all people will hate you. Because you associated with me. This, this is the time that you need to check why people love you. Can you just ask your neighbor? How many people are praising you? Because here you can see that the Holy Spirit to gain your soul. There will be persecution. And people around you, and people you love, brothers and sisters, even friends, they are about to betray you. They will tell you, uh, your God, we can't see him. The, the family will just leave you. There is something that I have learned about your families. I mean, they are just like there. In every family, there is politics. The moment you, are, you, are, you have nothing, you are, you are nothing. The moment you have everything, you are something. Else. They will never listen to you until you have got something. So it's good for God when you feel with the Holy Spirit. Most of the time, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, He make He make sure that you go to the wilderness. It takes you away where you will forget you. After you are forgotten, now himself, he takes over and make your name to be. But we spend time questioning why we are facing this. Holy Spirit has not come to bring blessings. Our mistakes today is a prosperity gospel. Holy Spirit has not come to us so that we get money. Business, no. He has come so that we fulfill what we are called to do. Your, your, your life here must be complete and what he has been given to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you just read this verse, Mama? Uh, verse 18 and 19. Verse 18 and 19. Yes. But not a hair of your head will perish. Yes. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Look here. 
this issue of patience or endurance if you want to read Romans 5 verse 5 you will see what the Holy Spirit does hallelujah Amen. Romans 5 verse 5 mm-hmm. <coughs> such hope in God's promises never disappoint us because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. I want to explain this verse because most of the time as Christians we make mistakes. Holy Spirit when he comes to us one of his best ability is able to remind us his his promises. He remind us God's promises. We start to see them. And from there when we the moment we start to see persecution come. Betrayal come. Hatred come. But all this does not disappoint us. Because there is a love that has been poured in our heart. If you want to see that you are a Christian, it's when you are challenged. Our Christianity of looking unto the things of the world sometimes it's, it really takes us away from that Christ. That is why in First Thessalonians that is why chapter, five, Thessalonica, Papili, chapter 5 you read verse 19 it says, verse 19. It says what? But Thessalonica chapter 5 verse 19 Do not be unresponsive to the waking and yeah, guidance of the Holy Spirit. You just read, Mama. It says, Do not quench, subdue, or unresponsive to the waking and guidance of the Holy Spirit. There are two things that the Holy Spirit does waking and guidance. How do you take your decisions? Where do you go from here? There is a waking. If you take decisions without Holy Spirit, you can do what is wrong. If you sit and plan without guidance of the Holy Spirit, you can be misled. If you read here, you could see that Holy Spirit, the Bible says, we must not be unresponsive. We must be unresponsive. In other words, Holy Spirit can put something on you. When, when you, are, you are driving like the Holy Spirit says, turn right, turn right, turn right. Because one of the things that makes us not to turn is our attractions. Our flesh senses are working very well. Always Satan brings something Satan to make us not to listen to the Holy Spirit. Wake up and pray. You start to feel cold. You, start to feel. you pull more blankets. Holy Spirit can just speak small things and try to teach you to a bigger thing. You cannot start with big things. Small things. Just little guidance. Look at the left. What are you seeing? So from there you are 
it happens also to prophet Jeremiah. What are you seeing? Jeremiah. You're explaining. What is it? Jesus you. That's why it talks about guidance. That is why I will like our shata. Guidance it means there's a teaching. Or shati wa uraru una lu ruti wa namu. Ibele una lu supi wa zila. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ask your neighbor say, my friend. Ucham tulang hafrom khotiaga. Are you not quenching the Holy Spirit? When I would tell me, my Allah lang na. Sometimes now, if you look at us here, you will see that we are no longer ish. I mean, our gospel is no longer of Holy Spirit. Ah, or level level matcha uto le more evangelia na isali le ya my Allah le lang. I just felt to come to tell you that we need Holy Spirit. Ke na ukore kete kile thalu secho rito kama my Allah le lang but if not. We are going to quench Holy Spirit. How is it going to be done? With what we heard. With what we see. With what we are just perceiving. We are not even guided or led. Sometimes people end up hating some people without understanding. They are in flesh. 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 When you are in spirit, how do you mean? Like the apostles and the, the, the prophets. You don't do what you wish. I will give you an example. You remember what happened to Peter? When he wanted to eat with the apostles, you remember what happened to Peter? When he wanted to eat with the apostles, you remember what happened to Peter? When he wanted to eat with the apostles, you remember what happened to Peter? And the Bible says he fainted. Bible says he did fall. It was not the fainting of hunger. Ne so he did fall like a rooster get tall. He was Holy Spirit was taking him to where he does it. Moyo ala na umu isa na ke umu yena sa kushishi. And he saw a vision. Abana po na limo. And God began to speak with him. Mo dima tumo bili dishana lien. Peter was a man filled by the Spirit. Petro na limo na ya teaching kama yo halalela. I don't know if you're hearing that. I get to buy you what you buy. Let me give you example. 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 If you want to see Philip, how do you know Philip? Go and read about Philip. I love Philip. Philip taught me that the ministry is not a gathering or church. After Philip, Philip, big crusade in Samaria. crusade Samaria. It took the angel first to speak with Philip. Philip. Philip, you can go to the desert. But when Philip was walking, the Holy Spirit to make him to Because most of the time, it takes God to speak with you. But for you to reach on time, I don't know if you hear me. Philip, Philip moved out of Elijah. The great revival. And he said the angel spoke. So now it's God. I know this one is the angel. When he was walking, Holy Spirit said, Hey, Philip. Run. Otherwise, you won't catch us. Many of us today, we have moved out, but we have not reached there. We have moved out, but we have not reached there. We have moved out, but we have not reached there. We don't listen to him. Most of the time, our focus is he has spoken. I know. But we have got Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us. If you believe, say. Read Galatians five. Read Galatians five, verse twenty-five. Galatians five, twenty-five. Ask somebody, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Or you are filled with your church? You know, when you are filled with your church, nobody cannot deny you. Or, you. Yeah, or sometimes you are filled with me. You, are, you can be filled by me. Amen. But to extend that, when you hear about me, when when you just hear people accusing me, you fight. But when you are filled by the Holy Spirit, you get guidance. Holy Spirit will say, "Hey, okay, you are following this man. This is my servant. 
I don't know if you're hearing me. Can you see why you are so confused? It's because you are not led by the Spirit of God. Can you read verse 25? Verse 25. If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, uh-huh. we must also walk by the Spirit with personal integrity, godly character, and moral courage. Our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. Our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. I know why the writer of Galatians was saying. Many Christians by that time, you know, many of them have been taken by the move of what they saw. And now they were trying to, you know, imitate Yes. but they were lacking courage you have you ever find that uh, you can still speak in tongues but when you finish you can insult so now okay Paul when he spoke with them he said if truly you people you are filled by the spirit of God let's see that integrity Somebody is able to say I'm filled by the Spirit. If we can ask people here, everybody can say I'm a Christian. Everybody can still say I'm a Christian. We without the character that shows you are filled. Read again my mother verse. Is it said, If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, mm. we must also walk by the Spirit with personal integrity, godly character, and moral courage. Our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. Our conduct empowered. Our conduct is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Amen. You can see that. What I was beginning to see that uh, is the fruits of the spirit can be seen clear on a person. The fruit of the spirit, when we look at you, we can see it clear. Not long I was saying, uh, maybe we need to ask our families if we are saved. If you are married, or you married, ask your partner. Because even the Bible says the wives must conduct themselves in a way so that they will be able to win those who are their husbands. Their character. I mean the way they show what they have inside they are not be of outside but inside many people outside but their Christian but inside they are empty I mean, I mean by the time when I was start to be a Christian I was to be a pretender and this makes me to suffer too long not to receive all this because I found that many people were saying to be filled with the spirit you must speak in tongues you have to fall and you speak in tongues this makes me to go to different places so the question is when I wake up am I still going to live the life I'm living I was discouraged by those who wake up after the because their character was still the same 
hope they can speak in tongues and be heard as well. I have the questions, what kind of tongues are these? I will not pretend. I will not pretend to speak in tongues. I have found many tongues today. People can talk in tongues. And lucky enough, God gave me the grace to hear tongues. When I listen, I found that I was just talking something. It starts with the character and the fruits that we must show. I don't know if you hear it. Start to show the fruits before you are filled. Listen to this. Start to show the fruits that you are filled and you will be filled. You know, I, I was so touched when I found that Jesus never spoke about the Holy Spirit when Judas was there. <laughs> I don't, I don't, nowadays, nowadays, because we don't have guidance, we speak when Judas is there. <laughs> it's only when Judas moved out. Judas Jesus began to say, you know what? This will happen. This so is so now you are speaking plainly. And open their minds. When their minds are open, you are to say. So it's good that I must go. I can see, I can see you are troubled. Now you understand my problem. But it's expedient for me to go. So that the Holy Spirit will come. Because if I don't go, the one who work in me oh, will it will be only me who is working. That's why Jesus said, when that I go, you are. do what I have done. I will do it. This thing is not happening. That we are looking for the Holy Spirit. What is happening is stories. It's claiming. It's claiming. Not long I found our young people. They are not finding revelation about the Holy Spirit. If they found that revelation, these young people will prophesy. They will find that they so need to prophesy except you are filled. They will check their character and live right understanding that they need the feeling. But our young people, they are ready to prophesy before they are filled around you see their characters <laughs> are running to be shown to the fruits but we are not seeing the infilling but we are not seeing the infilling but we are not seeing the infilling my friend what do you think of the are you sure you are filled by the Holy Spirit? Can you look at the eyes of the person? Look at the eyes of the person. You will see that there are many books. Look what the Holy Spirit can do. In Mark 1, 9 to 12. Mark 1, 9 to 12. The Bible says, Holy Spirit forced Jesus. After he was baptized by John, he was forced. He went to the desert. You know, Jesus could not spend 40 days, 40 nights without the Holy Spirit. He was not going there to fast to get the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came. After he was baptized and he was forced. Okay, can you, let me ask somebody here. When was the last time you were forced to obey God? You find that you can do something that even if it's impossible for you to do, but you have to do it. We need to reach a level whereby when we are forced to do, we obey. I don't know if you're hearing that. We need the Holy Spirit to force us. He was forced to go to the desert. He was forced to go to the desert. He was forced to go to the was forced to go to the desert. He was forced to go and to that mountain he was tempted. Today we go to 
the mountain to be filled. A mountain is a place where we have to be tempted. Tell about a mountain is a place where we have to be tempted. And when we pass that temptation, we are transformed. When we pass the temptation, we are transformed. In Acts 13, 6 to 12. 6 to 12. I want us to read this. Yes. Just read this one. Deutero chapter 13, verse 6. Ufetalna maula utwalaf. When they had traveled through the entire island of Sepra, as far as Paphos, they found a sorcerer, a Jewish false prophet named Bar Jesus, who was closely associated with the pro proconsul of the province, Segas, Paulus of in at an intelligent and sensible man. He called for Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God concerning eternal salvation through faith in Christ. But Elimas the sorcerer, for that is how his name is translated, opposed them trying to turn the proconsuls away from accepting the faith. But Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit and led by him, looked steadily at Elimas and said, You, Elimas, who are full of every kind of deceit, and every kind of fraud, you son of the devil, enemy of everything that is right and good, will you never stop perverting the straight path of the Lord? Now watch, the hand of the Lord is on you, and you will be blind, so blind that you will be unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately a mist and darkness fell upon him, and he groped around seeking people to lead him by the hand. The proconsul believed the message of salvation when he saw what had happened, being astonished at the teaching concerning the Lord. I want to tell you that always when the Holy Spirit is supposed to be coming to hell, you find there are many who are blindfolded by witches. Always, always when this Holy Spirit wants to deliver people, you find there are witches who are blocking them. You can see that we need Holy Spirit. If not, we'll be deceived by witches. If you read about Elimas, you see him try to block this man so that he must never understand the gospel. Until Paul look intently to him. You know, if we don't look intently, we won't deliver those who are blocking others. I'm afraid now when I read these scriptures. There are many witches in the church today. And without Holy Spirit, we won't tackle them. The Bible says, how Paul tackled this witch, Elimas. He looked, he was filled by the Spirit of God. He looked intently to him. And he said, blindness will come to you. Unless blindness will come to a witch, revelation will never come to you. Many times we found that we have believed the wrong people. We need Holy Spirit now to give us a spirit of dissent. 
especially we pastors kodu kodu rona ba rote otherwise we are elimas reto tia go elimas and we bring them close to us otherwise if we can read ao ka ba la botse botse act 8 ditero chapter 8 you will find another one there ตะโลมวะตะโลมวะนะมุลาเวสเซเวนตีนเวสเซเวนตีนเดนเดเลฮันส์ออนเดมแอนดเดรีซีฟเดโฮลีสปิริตแอนด์เวนไซมอนโซ
the church that we need to resemble. We the Holy Spirit. The people must go. But I don't know if you are hearing me. If not, how is it now? We have got all sorcerers. And these sorcerers are speaking in tongues. And they can't quote scriptures. They can't leave scriptures. They can't show the character. Christianity is becoming like a joke. It's no longer a power. There's no power from the Holy Spirit. Paul says the kingdom of God is not of eating and drinking. It's of power. Where is that power? Power that can make it to overcome power that can make it to be exalted where is that power power that can make it to see that this one is not perfect you know I was concerned but I will tell you I will just pray that you know God will even change our ministry so that our ministry must not be of TV. And Facebook. That whatever we say, through the power of the Holy Spirit, people will know there is power of God. Through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will advertise the Holy Spirit will advertise you. With our Holy Spirit, we will do things on our own. Look at this verse, maybe 21 again. It says, you have neither part nor portion in this matter. Your part is not right. In the sight of God, 22. Repent therefore of this your wickedness and pray for God if perhaps I love what this man said Peter he says pray for God maybe you will forgive you see this is the thing that we have not been preaching guarantee everybody that after he pray the prayer of repentance is saved it's not true it, God will have to decide that you have to come close it's the one that wants you to come close it's not true that is why we end up having wrong people in the church we guarantee everybody who says I'm a Christian is a Christian without being filled with the Holy Spirit if you want to see go and read from Acts 7 where there was widows who were complaining and these apostles prayed and asked God and from there they began to choose ashes and those ashes were seven and one of them was Stefano and they were filled by the spirit and those apostles said no we don't need we don't need to serve tables because the spirit can be fasting in prayer they chose ashes to be filled by the spirit of God we need to reach a level where we choose in the church we must be sure is filled by the spirit of God if not we are, we are grooming a wrong church if we just have majority we have majority for us this is the time that when your pastor chooses you to do something when you see that you are empty you say pastor I don't want to be that I don't want to be that because at the end of the day you are partaking in what God will never approve we are sinning today because we are doing the things of the spirit without the spirit of God 
pastor will say, Are you feeling good? And what are you doing in the church? We have the spirit of God. Today we have got ushers, singers, worshippers, who are liars, and who are fornicating. And at the end of the day, we have a church. If we reach a level where we know Holy Spirit is there to teach us to reach us. Can you write that? Holy Spirit is there to empower you to reach us. If you are empowered to reach us, you must know that people are looking at you. You must develop a character. That when they look at you, they look inside the name of God. I don't know if you are here. So, Holy Spirit must empower you to reach out. Let's read this verse and we will close if the verse. If we read uh, maybe Ephesians 5 verse 18. By Ephesians 5 verse 18. The Bible says, do not be drink with wine. We drink with wine. Just read mama. Verse 18. Verse 18. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, it's corruption and stupidity. But be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by Him. Holy Spirit, I already told you that is there to guide us. Luke 2, verse 25. Luke 2, 25. You see Simon getting a revelation. Simon coming by the Holy Spirit. Simon coming by the Holy Spirit. Simon Just read verse 25. Now there was a, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this was righteous and devout carefully observing the divine law and looking for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Christ the Messiah the anointed prompted by the Spirit he came into the temple enclosure and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do, to do for him the custom required by the law, Simeon took him into his arms and blessed and praised and thanked God and said, Now Lord, you are releasing your born servant to live this world in peace according to you, according to your word. Okay, stop there, Mama. I want us to see how this Holy Spirit was working in this mind. This is Simon who was serving God. He had a revelation. He will never die. You see the birth of Messiah. So automatically the same spirit have to guide him to the place where Messiah was born. This man might have knew that he is the Messiah was born. But that day when Jesus was brought to the temple, he came by revelation. Can you just see a man he knows where to get him. When he reached it, he was not even complaining. He never you know this man, eh, because he was a man of revelations. I don't think this man has ever worried. A man of revelation cannot worry because he knows what will happen. God told him that you won't die. When it was the time he was sick. And then he asked God, 
what about Jesus? I don't know all that Jesus is not yet come. Jesus has 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 not yet come. Because if you have got Holy Spirit, you will not be able to get out of the way. Holy Spirit will reveal, uh, you are praying for this. Look how time we are facing. Look how time we are facing. We are praying because we don't have revelation. Sometimes we pray to get things because we don't have revelation to find these things. We were supposed to be praying as a fellowship between us and God when we are asking things. Because that's what the Bible says. God knows what we want even before we pray for these things. He knows in the resting time pray for those things that God knows he will give you. We are supposed to be establishing our relationship. I don't know if you are hearing me. We are spending time asking God. Oh, give us this. Oh, give us this. Because we don't have revelation. If you want to see that, we pray for revelation. When God reveals and bring what we are searching, do we carry on prayer? Because we have found it. So now, this man, after you got this revelation, I'm sure there were some challenges. Maybe there was a car hijacking. And they wanted to shoot him. I'm sure in his heart he was laughing. He says, I won't die. No one can kill me. I will die when, you know, when Messiah comes. When he comes, I'm waiting to hold him. I'm not to hold Messiah. A person who's filled with the Holy Spirit is encouraged by the promises of God. He's going to be shaken by circumstances. Many times we are spending time talking about our circumstances. I don't know if you're hearing me. If we know that this will happen, why are we doing all this? I don't know if you are hearing me. If we know this will happen, why are we doing it? This shows that we don't know. We are dark. If we read this scripture, when I was reading it, I was challenged. I was challenged. Challenge, yes, sir. Sixty-three. Sixty-three. Yes. Verse ten. Sixty-three. Verse ten. Yes, sir. Sixty-three. Verse ten. Can you just read there? You say what? It says, but yes, they rebelled and grieved His Holy Spirit. Therefore. He changed into their enemy and he fought against them. Stop there. Remember, the Bible said, don't be unresponsive to the Holy Spirit. Be not the Holy Spirit. These people, they rebel against the Holy Spirit. They become his enemy. Without Holy Spirit, you become God's enemy. That's what the Bible says. You can curse Jesus. But if you curse Holy Spirit, you will never be forgiven. You can curse Jesus, you will be forgiven. You curse Holy Spirit, forget. In fact, if you read in Amplified Bible, it says, oh, like amplified it says if you take, you, you take what Holy Spirit is doing and you attest it to Satan, you will never be forgiven. So think about people you are criticizing. Think about what happened to you when you say, oh, servants of God. 
but to us, can, can, we, can you just look at the issue of how many people die because of kissing some service not knowing that this anointing look at the example of Elisha boys, 42 boys we just say bald man you are bald man boys came out and destroyed them. this was Elisha now we are talking about Holy Spirit. Now, if now you curse Holy Spirit, the Bible says you will never be forgiven. Why? Because Holy Spirit will never come. I don't know if you are hearing that. Just tell the Bible, say, my friend, it's better you don't even curse anyone. Because you might be cursing the works of the world. And you will never be forgiven. Punishment will come. Today you need Holy Spirit. You must check how you are living. The character you are showing. It shows who is in you. You need to be able to say who is into me. Is the one unto the world. If without Holy Spirit who is unto you. You eliminate you. I want to pray with you today. But you need to receive Holy Spirit. And without Holy Spirit, you will use your power. You will use your ability. Very soon you will be tired. God bless you.